to be successful in research, one of the first things you have to do is actually come up with a research project. And part of that is finding research gaps. So today I'm going to talk you through a process to be able to find novel research gaps in your field. And all of this is actually outlined in my 30 day research jumpstart guide. It's really a guide that walks you from how to go from not knowing your field to having a research project that is novel that you can do and start collecting data on it. So if you want that actually written out, that will be in a link in the description below for you. But we're going to get into how to find a research gap. So the very first step of finding a research gap is actually to learn your research field. Obviously, if you don't know anything about your field, it's gonna be impossible to actually find a research gap or to know what has been done or what hasn't been done. So the first step is to kind of go look for reviews, start understanding the background information of your field and the research that's been done to date. And then you can actually start looking for what research would you think would have been done, but maybe hasn't been done. And that's ultimately how you're going to find your research gaps. But the first step is you should really be able to explain so to someone what your field is, why it's important, and know the background information for how all these things work together. Obviously, if I'm in studying mass spectrometry and I don't even know how a mass spectrometer works, I'm not going to be able to come up with gaps in my field because I don't even know what I should be measuring or what I can even measure if I don't really understand how mass spectrometers work or what you can even couple them to. So you need to start just basically understanding your field at large and you don't have to be super dialed into a super specific field. You can be a little bit more general at this point. And as you start understanding it, then kind of think about where do your interests really lie in the field and then focus in that specific area. So for example, I started really large at ion mobility and mass spectrometry analysis. And eventually I kind of narrowed into the area of steroid isomer separation through ion mobility mass spectrometry analysis, where ion mobility and mass spectrometry overall is a very, very large field with multiple different components with it. The second part is going to sound really easy, but I, I know that a lot of people struggle with it, is basically to find research gaps. So once you know your field, now it's time to say, okay, what are things that I now think are research gaps? So a few ways that you can do this is one, think about interdisciplinary areas of the field. Where is an area of the field that can be combined with another area that maybe hasn't been done yet? So for my example, when I went to steroid analysis with eye mobility mass spectrometry, I thought about reproductive physiology and mass spectrometry being combined together. And something really common to need to be measured in reproductive physiology is hormone levels, which steroids are one of the hormone levels that are important to reproductive physiology. So it's thinking about areas of interdisciplinary. How can you combine two fields together in a way that might not have been up to this point? Another way to do it is to expand a variable. So if you're reading a research study and they decided to pick one type of thing within a variable. So for example, one of the research studies that was done early on in steroids and eye mobility is they looked at how group one metals affects the separation of steroids. However, they only chose one metal. They chose sodium. They didn't look at how lithium or potassium affect it differently than sodium. So my first paper was actually expanding that variable, expanding the metals analyzed to include lithium and potassium so that we could get a better picture of how group one metals affect and how different group one metals can affect the separation of steroid isomers instead of only how one metal affected it. So you can think about this in either expanding a variable or translating a variable. So if somebody studied something in one disease, how can you study it in a different disease? Or if somebody studied machine learning on one type of problem, can you take a similar approach and study and apply it to a different type of problem and figure out different data from that problem? The final place to find research gaps is to address a limitation. So if you're reading research articles or you're reading reviews, look at their future work and look at what do you think are some of the limitations of this paper? How do you move it from theory to practice is also one way to think about it as well. 
and think about where you want your field to go, where are you now, and how do you start covering that gap? Again, all of these things really require you to know the basics of your field and to know research papers in your field before you're able to do this. But you can basically ask these questions of almost any research paper and start developing ideas of potential gaps that you could be filling. And then the final thing is once you have your list of different gaps is to actually test your gaps. And so what you're gonna test them for is to see, are they really novel? So just because you think that this and this being combined together is a research gap, you need to go see if research has actually been done in that or if it's been done in the way you think it has. And if it has, then you can reapply those same questions to that new research to try and find a new gap. If you can't find any papers that have been done in that research area, then it could be a novel field and is worth investigating. Another question is if it's a feasible field to be in. So your novelty and your feasibility are kind of two sides of an excess. And if it's highly, highly novel, as in there's nothing even touching on the subject, typically your feasibility is going to go down because you don't even have the base methods to be able to get to measuring what this highly novel thing is. This is why a lot of nature papers, a lot of really highly novel papers, tend to have a lot of authors on it because they basically took several different research projects and combined them all together to make this really novel paper where each research project was really one step along the way. You want to check though, is it actually feasible to be able to do this research? Do you know how to get from point A to point B and complete the project? If you don't, then you may want to start on a project that leads you to be able to get there. So for an example that I did, I really wanted to be able to take serum. We only had a little bit of serum from a previous reproductive physiology study, and I want to be able to take it and then analyze the lipidolic profile and the steroid profile of this small amount of serum. And so what I had to first do is that project was fundamentally unfeasible because there weren't a lot of methods that could do that analysis on that level of serum. So what I first did was create a method that could do that level of analysis. And that was the first project that would filled one research gap. And then I could apply that method to this specific study we wanted to do to then be able to fill that research gap as well. And then the final question to ask is, is it significant? Is it going to make an impact in your field? And would people care about it? As much as we might wanna say, we want to know everything that's out there, there are sometimes certain things that you're just not going to get funding for and people don't really care about. It doesn't have an impact in society or even much of an impact in your field. It's kind of like a trivia fact for a lot of people. And so you want to make sure that whatever you're going to be studying, whatever this research gap is, that it is significant and you can justify why someone should spend money on researching it. If you follow these three steps, you learn your field, you find different research gaps, and then you test those research gaps, what you should be left with is a research gap and specifically a research idea or question that you can then ask, which can bloom into your research project. Now, if you want me to go even deeper with you and show you how to do all of these things and the different tools to use to do all of these things, First, check out my 30-day research jumpstart guide, but you can also check out my research accelerator course. I will have it on a link in the description below. And that really has me walking you through, through PowerPoints, worksheets, and even tutorials of how to do these different things, and then even take it further. Once you have your idea, how do you actually create a plan and start collecting that data? If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more tips on how to become more efficient in your research and I hope to see you in the next video.